But hear me, I'm not talking about you the person. I'm talking about the spiritual man that's tied up inside you the person. You see, we have talked about prayer, and I can tell you truthfully that not everybody is engaged in prayer. We have been talking and we have been, been ministering through the realm of prayer. And, and I want to tell somebody, prayer works. Right. Hear me, prayer works. Uh, you may have a gloomy look on your face today, and I can say this, you don't pray, you don't believe prayer works. Uh, you can be in this house today and not have a job for over two or three or four months, and I'm going to tell you, you must not believe that prayer works, because I believe that prayer works. I remember being an unemployed man sitting on my couch when I got the Holy Ghost, and I'll tell you this, on Sunday you're going to hear a little bit more, but there must be a new Holy Ghost from the Holy Ghost that I received, because when I got the Holy Ghost, I won't tell you, all of hell knew that I got the Holy Ghost, because all of my friends knew that there was a change in that man. Why? Because I told them, you're all going to hell. I'm not saying that that's the right thing to do, but I want to tell somebody, some of you ain't got no back invigorate your knowledge with the Word of God. Because there's something inside of me that says, you don't got it right, sweetheart. And if you ain't got it right, guess what? You may go to a devil's hell. And I don't want you going to a devil's hell. You need a miracle in your life. So I'm going to help you with the Word of God. But I'm going to tell somebody, some of y'all are scared. Once you come into contact with Jesus Christ, something changes in you. And if it doesn't, go touch Him again. And if it doesn't, go touch Him again. And if it doesn't, call me and we'll both go touch Him. Because I promise you, when I touch Him, something changes inside of me. I am yet to go into the presence of God and touch the Him of His
We're trying to eliminate self. And when we keep battling self in a service, we can't come under one mind and one accord. If Sister Crystal and I are out trying to go door knocking and to, to, to find somebody, and she's got these, you know, six inch heels, she's going, my feet are hurting, my feet are hurting. I'm like, sister, you are a hindrance to what we're trying to do. Amen. Did it ever fall on you to wear some flats or some tennis shoes today? I mean, I mean, wouldn't that be awful? Here she comes. You're like, we're going door knocking, and here she comes. I'm like, oh, no. Well, I guess we'll go about two or three houses and we will turn around and go home. That is the same, same thing that walks into this building when you walk in and you cannot touch God with the rest of us. When you cannot, when you walk in and... I mean, it's like... What are they saying, Jeremy? Clear! <laughs> Clear! <laughs> Amen! Uh, that no one, I'm, I'm helping us tonight. Because we are, we are on borrowed time. And it's time to get ready. We're, we're getting ready to walk into a very, very powerful 30, 40 days of presence. We are getting ready to see miracles, signs, and wonders. This young lady's mother is coming all the way from Louisiana. She's going to be here. She might only be here for one service. I've already begun praying that God, whatever you got to do in one service, you do it. I've seen greater miracles. I've seen people walk in and receive the Holy Ghost as they've gone to their pew. I've seen them get up in the middle of preaching, come down and receive the Holy Ghost. Then I've seen people get the revelation, stand their feet, say, Signs and wonders. But hear me, church. The Bible clearly tells us. He didn't say, watch that story. Throw that, throw that first picture up there. He didn't say, I want some of you to sanctify yourselves. He rose up in the morning and they moved from Shinar and came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel and they lodged her before they passed over. And I don't know that's and it came to pass that after three days that the officers went through the host. So remember that there are officers over everybody's family. So there's 12 tribes and there's officers. Officers of thousands, officers of hundreds, officers of, uh, of tens. So he sends these officers. And they command the people saying, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of your God and the priest of the bear of Levites bearing it, then you shall remove your place and go after it. Go on. You will stay behind them 2,000 cubits. You won't come near, which is uh, for the way you have passed. You have not passed before. Go ahead. And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. This next one. And Joshua spoke into the priests, saying, Take up the ark and pass before the people. He didn't say some of them. He didn't say go to the children of Judah, the children of Naphtali, the children of Gad. But leave out Benjamin and Joseph. Uh, we don't want them. And, and Issachar, throw him out. But you can put Reuben in. He didn't say that. He said, I want you to go and pass before every one of them. So that every one of them can come together in one mind, in one accord. Because what we're about to has never been done. As a matter of fact, Reuben and Gad, you got your inheritance on the east side and half a, tri a tribe of Manasseh, you got your inheritance on the east side of the Jordan. But you are going to go with us on the west side and you're going to fight. Why? Because God wanted to make sure that everybody was taken care of when they went into that valley to fight. He wanted to make sure that there was complete unity, a complete that everybody was in it together. And so I say to you today, that is what it's going to take in order for us to walk in to that dimension of Miracle Month with everything available to us. Some of you are going to lay hands on somebody and you're going to speak a word. Some of you are going to lay 